Hi guys, it's Jason here from Head First. Today we're looking at this old Marshall. It's a 2959 model. Okay, very rare. It looks like a 1959 model Super Lead. Four inputs, two volumes, but you'll notice it's got a reverb. Right, so this amp, I believe, from a little bit of internet research, was made by Marshall for only two years, and there are probably 150 to 200 units made only. This amp, based on the badging on the rear of it, was actually distributed into Italy before sometime in its life, I don't know when, made it here to Australia. So we're going to have a listen to this. I haven't turned it on, haven't plugged it in, I haven't been inside the amp yet. We'll have a listen to the kind of tones that this thing will put out and we will take it to the bench and we'll have a bit of a look at it. And the owner of this amp also sent me uh, a schematic of the preamp which he lifted from a book that he has got because I couldn't find the schematic for a, uh, for this amp, for the 2959. So stay tuned and we'll check it out. All right, so let's trace through the schematic. I'm looking at this literally for the first time. I probably had 30 seconds looking at this before I just hit the record. So look, first impressions is that the early part of this amp looks just like a 1959 Super Lead certainly at the v1 level so you can see here here's our four guitar jack inputs here and we've got our 68k i'm just referencing the table down here because the values are written next to the component number rather than having the values on the scheme itself um 68k grid stop is here and looking at the table here it looks like these cathodes are 2k7 slightly different than a super lead because you'd have 820 on the normal channel and normally 2k7 sometimes 820 on both um, looks like 100k plate resistors up here and if you follow out through the coupling caps we go to the two volumes and you can see that the triple volume has a bright cap and then into the 470k I'm looking at the values in the table here, 470k mixer resistors with the triple peaker here, and then into the grid of V2A. So that all looks pretty normal. Um, things start to get a bit different here. I'm looking at R12, and actually looking at this, this is a plate-fed tone stack. So this is now becoming very different. So what you'd normally see in the Super Lead and a lot of the you know great Marshall circuits is... V2 uh, gain stage coupled to a cathode follower and then the tone stack driven from uh, the 100k cathode resistor for the ca in the cathode follower stage. So this is not what's happening here. We have a plate fed tone stack and then off the treble wiper we're into the grid of V2B and this stage I'm looking at this right so actually off the stage we're through the coupling cap and then this is the reverb driver here okay so this little transformer here which is sitting on the plate of V3A uh, has been driven by this triode here and then here's the reverb tank and then uh, V3B is a recovery stage for that reverb and if you look at what's happening at the, the junction here off this coupling cap the reverb is mixed in parallel so this is the reverb pot here so your dry signal if you like continues its merry way all through here and the reverb or well, the signal that then drives the reverb tank and the sound coming from the reverb tank is now mixed here in parallel to your dry signal so this stage here is kind of, you know, post this tone stack. So it's going to be really interesting to hear what this amp sounds like, even with, you know, with the reverb turned off, because this is clearly a different configuration than the Super Lead. Um, from here, we've got our phase inverter down here. And I'm just see if I can do a quick scan of the values. Here they are here. That looks completely normal and stock. 
Okay, so the standard Marshall phase inverter set up here by the look of it. Um, presence pot in parallel with this 4K7 here. So not the classic 5K linear setup, but certainly very common in Marshalls of this era. Um, and that's all I have, right? So I don't actually have the, the power amp um, schemes. It's just got the preamp page. So yeah, pretty interesting. This is certainly all very, very different. Let's have a listen to what it sounds like. All right, so I'm plugged into the normal channel. That's where we're going to start. I'm going to listen to the clean tones in this amp. I've got the volume up, bang on, midday. And this is, you know, if you're looking for clean tones in this amp, this is, this is where you'll be. Kind of sounds to me very similar to the normal channel in a plexi. It's kind of but very woolly, very bassy, not really suited for kind of guitar, but you know, hey, if you're looking for a clean tone and you're prepared to kind of pull all the bass out of the EQ, maybe run the presence a lot higher with the treble, you can, you know, you can get a clean tone out of this. Actually, let me try that now. I'm going to re EQ the same. It's a bit, bit bassy for me. All right, so I've just pulled the bass all the way back and kind of cranked the presence and the treble up a bit. Let's have a listen to this. So yeah, that's kind of sounding a bit more like a clean guitar tone that I'd be searching for. Got a bit more bite, a bit more presence in it. I know you're just dying to hear this reverb, right? So let's let's turn the reverb up and have a listen. Yeah. All right, I've got the reverb up. It's up at about four, so about eleven a.m. and it sounds like this. Don't you love it? Let's go and check out the high treble channel now and we'll hear what the kind of overdriven sounds in this amp are like. Okay, so we're in the high treble channel. I've just put it all the way up to about 7, so it's about 2 p.m., which is exactly where I would set a normal 9059 Super Lead circuit. And let's have a listen to this. I'm on the uh, neck pickup first and then we'll go to the bridge.
definitely a bit of break up there, right? So not a bad tone. It feels pretty cool to play. Not the same as a crank plexi. It's it's yeah, like it just doesn't have that kind of that vibe with the cathode follower and and then the way it breaks up. It's just not the same. But all you know, that aside, it's pretty cool. I think the inbuilt reverb tank, I don't know whether this was the first head that Marshall featured that in. If anyone knows, I'd love to hear your thoughts, Ryan. Put you put put your comments uh, in the video. Uh, I'd love to know what you know about this amp. We do know, of course, that there are a number of heads that followed this where Marshall would put a reverb tank in. Many, many. I wonder if this was the first. Let me know. Let's take this to the bench and we'll have a good look at it. Right, here it is, guys. So the serial, it's stamped with an M. So if you look that up, you'll see it's 1980. So this is kind of, you know, right at the tail end, really, of this JMP era. And you can see uh, the, the way this is set up, right? We've got a reverb here. Other than that, very standard super lead setup. I'll show you the rear. Here, you can see, as I said in the intro to the video, Milan. I'm not going to try and pronounce this correctly. Um, so this was originally an Italian distributed amp. Uh, Dr. Music here. And... Interesting, that's 2008, so it was still in Italy at that point. Um, let's open it up, right? Check it out, see what's going on. I'll just pause there for a second. Well, you can see it, right? So the reverb tank, you can see in the heads here, right? Bolted into the top of it, and... I mean, I've got to say, just very first inspection, nice and pretty clean inside. Original filter caps, the dailies, definitely original OT, and the PT looks the same era. So it all looks pretty original. Obviously, these won't be original uh, out output tubes. And you can see, because of the reverb stage, we have four... As we saw in the schematic, we have four preamp tubes, so I'm not going to say this is a good candidate for modding, but I'm going to say this is a good candidate for modding. Okay, so we've zoomed in on this now. I don't think it's been out of its hit shell for a while. J judging by the amount of grime and dust that's on here. Uh, look at the tag straight away. And I can see the date on here. 9th of April 1980. All right, so the serial code and the tag match. Definitely original transformers. Everything is completely original here, bar the, uh, the power tubes. So this is cool to see. Let's flip it over and I'll see what's inside this thing. Okay, let's start down the preamp end of this board. Now, the first thing you'll see here, of course, which is very different than a standard 9059 Super Lead, is this little transformer here. This will be the reverb driver. And not surprisingly, right, the leads with the RCA style terminals on them, or jacks on them, uh, are coming straight off this, uh, well certainly the send stages. Now, what's super interesting to me is this construction method. Now what we're seeing here is a good old single-sided printed circuit board from Marshall. But it's pop mount PCBs. Now in 1980, okay, this is really interesting. Pop mount PCB 1980. Now this is just prior to the JCM 800s coming out, and as we know, 
the 2203, the 2204, and the 1959 and 1997 models in the JCM800 era for the first few years still had chassis mount pots with, uh, you know, ST1 board sitting in the middle of the amp. It was only when they went to the horizontal input 800s uh, that we saw this style of construction with the PCB mount pot. So, you know, interesting, as I said, I understand there's only 150 to 200 of these made. And when they did it, Marshall, whoever did it, you know, ran the design of this, um, were clearly thinking about how to create some efficiencies in their construction and production line because building an amp like this, it takes less time. Um, but I guess because of the heritage of the 2203, 2204, 1959 and 1987 circuits, they never made that change initially when they went to the 800. If anyone knows more about this, drop your comments in in the video. I'd love to know. Look, everything else, these are all completely original. All of these bypass caps here. Coupling caps. I've got a 1980 2203 JMP and it has the exact same red uh, caps in it. All factory. Bias caps haven't been changed. Um, you do see this kind of large fuse board in a lot of the export models. Um, so we didn't, didn't necessarily see this in UK, uh, US or Australian delivered amps but you would see it in, I think, Canadian amps have this again. <laughs> I'm sure you guys will correct me. Uh, and this is obviously an EU or an Italian delivered amp, so this must have been part of the export requirements, I would, I would imagine. Tube sockets, everything here is completely original. Completely untouched, right? So always nice to see this. Um, Pretty interesting guys now these the only other thing I'm going to look at here is the the selectors now you see these mains and uh, impedance selector switch style switches you don't it's not a normal thing to see I think this is all factory, no doubt about that, but it's not the style of, uh, it's not what we saw in the this era JMP in the, you know, the other models that I've mentioned. And this impedance selector, I was looking at this carefully. Um, one, two, three. Okay, it's only got... It's only got two taps. Okay, so I'm going to investigate this a bit further, but I'm looking closely at this and I can see that uh, obviously here's our speaker jacks. This black wire here, let me just tilt, tilt this for you. This black wire here comes into the switch, so this is the common, and then we only have two other taps, and this purple wire will be the negative feedback. So we've got a yellow and a black. That looks a bit different than what I'd expect to see. Pretty interesting amp, guys. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Enjoyed listening to the tones and listening to that classic Marshall reverb. I'll catch you on the next video.